Your boss is always asking you that you gotta make things better. You gotta continually improve. Well, what does that mean? Well, I'm Chris Ward and I'm here to tell you what the pros know. One of the biggest tenets of the IT infrastructure library or ITIL as we call it, is continual improvement. We're always looking for ways to improve. And that's why when your boss or your manager or any of your leadership in your organization is saying, we need to make things better. We need to make sure that we're doing these improvement initiatives and we need to do all that kind of stuff. And you're like, okay, but how to do it well and how to do it efficiently and effectively, which is a big part of ITIL. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at something that ITIL gives to all of us called the Continual Improvement model or the CI model is what they call it. So to take a look at that, it looks a little bit like this. The continual improvement model is a series of questions and one statement used to be called the CSI approach, continual service improvement approach. And it was only six questions, but as you're going to see, they got to the part where you uh, basically says, how do we get there? And then did we get there? And everyone was like, uh, wait a minute, we got to do something at some point. And they go, oh, ah, yeah, that's true. So in ITIL 4, they added the statement, we actually take action, we actually do the work. So let's walk you through each one of these steps in the CI model, and we are going to use an example. Let's say we have our producer and director, Courtney, who has now been promoted to service desk manager at Acme Widget Incorporated. Acme Widget makes widgets, which sounds very familiar these days. And it basically, they have their customer support, they have their service desk where people can call in and if, if something's going on, they need some help. Well, as part of what we see here in the continual improvement model is ITIL says, anytime you do an improvement initiative, anytime you start any of this type of stuff, you start with the vision. Now. That makes it fairly simple. You think, well, okay, I have a vision of what this improvement initiative is supposed to do. But ITIL says you are pretty much hurting yourself unless that improvement initiative vision matches the vision of your business or your organization. So take a look. The first thing that we see here is, of course, what is the vision, okay? What is the vision? The vision is going to be the business vision, the mission, the goals and objectives. So let's say at Acme Widget, Part of your vision statement or mission statement says something about we want to have uh, our company should be number one in customer satisfaction of all the widget companies in the world, like globally. That's a pretty big vision. So how do I tie something like that to an improvement initiative? Well, Courtney's smart. And so she says, well, you know what? If I do something in my improvement initiative that matches having high customer satisfaction, hey, the service desk is one of the first places you go, right? To take a look at that. So she happened to go to some conference out there that told her about something called FCR, First Contact Resolution. And what that means is what it sounds like. Through the first person you chat with, the first person you call or email helps you with your solution that is typically going to raise your customer satisfaction rating. So she says, my vision for this initiative is to improve the FCR score for, for our service desk. Great, that's the vision. That's the improvement initiative that you wanna do. Well, the next thing is, anytime you have a journey, you gotta start somewhere. So she asks the question, where are we now? This is where you get your current state. This is where you get your baseline of where you're at right now. And that way you, that helps you know where you can go on that journey. So in this case, either one of two things will probably happen. Either one, Courtney is already uh, measuring and has metrics on your FCR score at Acme Widgets Service Desk, but maybe she didn't. Well, that's okay. What she can do is say, all right, well, let's take the next couple of weeks and create a baseline, get some data that we can measure against. Where are we currently at? So whether she already had the information or she actually you know, did some measurements, she finds out that she is at a 68% first time contact or first contact resolution, which is actually a pretty good uh, setting, but she wants to get better. She wants to really get that up more because that will then improve the customer satisfaction of Acme Widget. So she says, all right, I know where I am right now. I have my baseline. I'm at 68% FCR. 
Next step, of course, is where do you want to be? This is where you set the target, the end game, where you want to be at the end of this improvement initiative. And one thing that ITIL says is you should use SMART targets. Now, a little side note, SMART is an acronym that stands for Specific, Measurable, Achievable or Attainable, Relevant and Time Bound. So she needs to set a target. And she decides that, well, doing a little gap analysis, maybe some benchmarking against other uh, service desks in the widget industry, and she knows kind of what their scores are. She says, I am going to set a, uh, you know, a goal or a target of having a 72% FCR score over the next 90 days. So let's talk about that. Is that specific? Absolutely. Is that measurable? Well, of course it's measurable. If you can measure FCR before, you can still measure FCR. Then, of course, is it achievable or attainable? And that's why she probably, if she's done other improvement initiatives similar to this, she might have a good idea. Or again, she does a little gap analysis or benchmarking and figures out if that's something that, sh that she can hit. But she says that's a 4% increase, I think it is. Is it relevant? Yes, it ties into the, again, the vision of the organization and the initiative. And time bound, yep, 90 days. So there you go. Now, I understand a lot of times if you're gonna be doing these type of improvement initiatives, there are gonna be more than just these one or two things, but for our illustrative purposes, that's why we're just kind of sticking with this. Also makes it a lot easier for us to keep track of in everything we do. Okay, so we already know the vision. We know where we are right now. We know where we wanna be. So we need to know, how do we get there? And this is where you put your plan into place. Great thing about the CI model is it's utilized in agile environments as well as your traditional waterfall project management. So it doesn't matter you know, which you know, mode or methodology you use, agile or waterfall, this model works. You might do a few more iterations in agile or you know, make it a little bit more uh, repeatable, but for the most part, you're gonna be following the same thing. So, you need to define the improvement plan. And this is where Courtney gets together with Ian and Corolla and they sit down, you know, two of her, you know, top people on her service desk and says something like, okay, guys, you know, what are we gonna do here? How are we gonna, how are we gonna make this work? And so Ian says, you know what? One thing I notice every time I get into the incident management system and I start typing in keywords from people calling in and talking to me, I get this laundry list of links to the knowledge base and we're talking about applications we don't even use anymore, um, steps that I know don't work anymore, referring to documents that don't exist anymore. And so he's like, we need to really clean up that knowledge base because I'm spending half my time just surfing through this stuff and trying to figure things out. And Courtney says, wow, that's a great idea. Let's, let's make that a part of our plan. Then, of course, Corolla says, you know, now that I'm a tier two, tier three, you know, kind of rocking the tech, arena, I remember when I first got on the service desk that there was somebody that was really good at taking calls and knew how to do incident diagnosis and analysis. And I just listened to him uh, do that. You know, Nate was on, on top of things. And I, I learned a lot just by listening in. Maybe we can bring in our tier two, tier three folks and double jack in with our first line responders at the service desk and they can learn some things from them just do an hour a week. That way it's not taking their whole week and not taking too much time. But if it's one hour a week for each one of those people, we all get to learn a little bit more. Courtney says, great. Thanks, Corolla. Thanks, Ian. Awesome stuff. We have the plan. And this is why, like I said, the old CSI approach just immediately went with, oh, did we get there? Well, no, we got to take action. We have to execute on the plan. Now, while you know, Courtney's executing on the plan. Of course, this is where if it's an agile, she might be doing multiple iterations. She might be doing some sprints and all kinds of fun things that we do with that. But she's executing on the improvement initiative. Once she does that, as she does that, she's gathering data. She's getting measurements and metrics. At the end though, 90 days goes by. And guess what? You gotta ask the question, did we get there? And at this point is where Courtney says, all right, we look at the numbers and yay, 72.3%. Congratulations, Courtney. She did it. 
She hit her target. And so she takes a look and evaluates the metrics and the KPIs of that improvement initiative. We'll typically you know, say, all right, well, what do those numbers look like? Is there any other data that I can gather? And then kicks it into the final step, the seventh step, which is how do we keep the momentum going? Because one thing about this term, notice it is continual improvement, continual improvement, right? So, you know, you don't just do one and done. Hey, we did ours for the, you know, the next decade. We don't have to do anything else. No, now it's awesome. That was great. Let's take what we've learned and let's improve upon it. Or let's say it did, it wasn't successful. Maybe she only went up 1%. Well, then you still do lessons learned. You still, you know, come in and start talking to people and say, all right, um, you know, let's debrief on this and see what, what was happening. Maybe you found out that the knowledge base was just too big to clean up. It was just, it's too much of a project in 90 days. Okay, we bit off a little bit more than we could chew. Or, hey, the people that were listening in on the double jack, they didn't do anything. They just listened to the, the, the tier three person do all the work. They didn't learn anything. Well, well, then we need to change how that goes. Maybe they can't say anything. They can only listen in the next time we try it. All that to say is that's a part of utilizing the continual improvement model, the CI model, to the next time your boss says, hey, let's get better at what we do, or when are we gonna start improving on things? The CI model is really what you need to use. There's a lot more like this in our ITIL courses here at IT Pro TV. I'm Chris Ward, and now I've told you what the pros know.